Tumelu's parents fight. Tumelu presses his hands over his ears. Mama is screaming. He sees the white of her eyes. Papa is using bad and ugly words. He jerks and shoves Mama. She falls against a table leg. The empty beer cans fall, clattering to the floor. Granny Melanie lives next door to Tumelu's parents. She arrives out of breath, leaning on her walking stick. With her walking stick, she tries to keep Papa from hurting Mama again. Papa slaps the walking stick aside. Frightened, Tumelu runs to his room. He hides under his bed and closes his eyes tightly. A loud banging sound comes from the kitchen. Mama screams and cries. There are many confusing voices. Mama is shouting, Tumelu, where is Tumelu? Tumelu crawls deeper underneath the bed, right up against the wall. He curls up without making a sound. The wall is cold against his back. A blue police light flashes outside the window. The ambulance's red light flickers on and off, on and off. Mama is crying louder. Tumelu hears how the vehicles drive off. The lights disappear. Now it's dark. Mama stopped crying. It's, it's quiet. Tumelu. Tumelu. It's a strange voice calling him. The floor is dusty. He sneezes. A lady with a torch peers underneath the bed. It's safe now, Tumelu. You can come out. Her voice sounds friendly, but Tumelu remains curled up in the same spot. The lady pushes the bed away from the wall. She gives her hand to Tumelu. She pulls him up. He stands next to her. She smells like teacher Nancy. Tumelu, I'm Auntie Miriam. The police phoned me. I'm here to make sure you are safe. Tumelu stares blankly into space. He doesn't hear her words. He only hears the shouting in his head, the screaming in his ears. Oh, it scares him and makes him sad to hear Mama and Papa fighting and saying ugly things to each other. Where, where are Mama and Papa? Your Mama went to the hospital. Your Papa is at the police station. And Granny Melanie? She is safely at her own house. You can stay with her until your mama and papa return. Auntie Miriam takes Tumelu by the hand. They walk through the house. The kitchen smells sour. The table is standing askew. Beer cans are scattered across the floor. She closes the back door behind them. They walk to Granny Melanie's house. I will arrange that you stay with Granny Melanie until the case is heard, Auntie Miriam says. Tumelu's heart beats in his ears. He wonders what a case is. Is it, is it something you pull over your head? How do you see then? How do you breathe? Oh, he's too scared to ask what the word means. He doesn't want anything to happen to Papa. He loves him, even when he shouts and fights after drinking too much beer. He also loves Mama very much. If only they would speak nicely to each other. Granny Melanie's house only has one room. She folds a blanket, smelling of soap around Tumelu and, and gives him hot, sweet tea to drink. She unrolls a grass mat and lies down on it. Come, come and lie down with me, Tumelu. She holds him in her arms. Tula, tu, tula, ba, ba, mm -hmm. sings until Tumelu falls asleep. 
Every night, Granny Melanie sings to Melu to sleep. During the daytime, he sits close to Granny Melanie. He wants to see her all the time. He builds houses from stone, stones, tins and boxes. As soon as a house is finished, he kicks it over. Then he builds another house. He misses Mama and Papa terribly. He does not long for the shouting and fighting. He does not want Papa to hurt Mama. The door to their house remains shut. One morning, Granny Melanie takes Tumelu to Hoopoo Land. She says it is time for him to return to school. Tumelu is scared. What will happen if, if he's at school when Papa and Mama return home? At the rickety green gate, they greet Teacher Nancy. Teacher, Granny says, I am Melanie, Tumelu's neighbor. His parents fight. His mother is in hospital. His father is staying with friends. I am looking after him until the case is heard. We are glad that you're back, Tumelu. Teacher Nancy smiles kindly. We missed you. Joshua comes running. Where were you? Come, we're playing soccer. Tumelu just shakes his head. Tumelu, let us fetch the balls for our exercises, teacher says. Every morning at Hoopoo Land, they do exercises. Teacher Nancy says exercise helps them to get rid of the jiggles. Without the jiggles, they think and work better. The children are joyful and noisy. The noise hurts to Melu's ears. He wants to put his hands over his ears and hide. Teacher Nancy gives a ball to each of them. They bounce the balls five times with the left hand and five times with the right hand. Sit down in two long lines and roll the balls towards each other. Tumelu's ball rolls past Samuel. Samuel ruffles his brown hair but says nothing. Tumelu's thoughts keep running in circles, round and round. When will Mama and Papa be coming back? What, what is a case? His head feels like the wind that tries to lift the roof from their house. Later, Nina, Rachel and Tumelu start playing at the same desk. They're cutting squares, rectangles and circles. They use the different forms to cut and paste pictures of houses, clouds, trees and flowers. Rachel makes sunflowers, a house and tree branches. Tumelu scratches on his paper with a thick black crayon. Rachel whispers, we must paste pictures, Tumelu. Tumelu pretends not to hear. He scratches more forcefully. The crayon breaks. He grabs the scissors and starts cutting. Nina adjusts her orange spectacles. She notices that Tumelu is cutting haphazardly. Can I help Tumelu? She asks. No! Tumelu snatches the paper away from her. He squashes and tears it, screaming, No! Don't! Stop! He throws himself to the ground, kicking and screaming. Confused, the children look at teacher Nancy. Continue cutting and pasting, she tells them in her teacher's voice. She picks up Tumelu and sits down in the corner of the class with him. His body is shaking as he cries. The children are speechless. Outside, a lonely hoopoo calls. Hoopoo. Hoopoo. At break time, Tumelu is sitting on the wooden bench under the career tree. Teacher Nancy, Nancy approaches him. I've called Auntie Miriam. She wants to help you feel safe. She says, a car stops outside the rickety green gate. It is Auntie Miriam and Granny Melanie. Tumelu drives with them to Auntie Miriam's office. They sit down in a small room. Tumelu notices that the walls need a new coat of paint. Auntie Miriam gives him a teddy bear to hold. It's soft and cuddly. I want to help you feel safe again, Tumelu. Auntie Miriam's voice and eyes are friendly. 
She invites him to speak to her. Tell me about the fighting. Tumelu looks down. He remains quiet. Suddenly, Granny Melanie stumps the wooden floor with her walking stick. Tumelu is startled. He looks up. Tumelu, you see me walking with this walking stick. This walking stick helps me get to where I want to be. If the two of you were to walk together, where would it take you? Back to Mama and Papa, Granny, he answers quickly. I was hiding and the ambulance and police came and took them away. Now I do not know if they will ever come home again. Granny Melanie sighs. To Melu, I was the one that called the ambulance and police. She waves her walking stick vigorously. Your parents should stop fighting and learn how to get along with each other. Auntie Miriam nods. That is how we want to help them in the case. Tumelu licks over his dry lips. What, what is a case, Auntie? He stutters. Auntie Miriam's dark brown eyes lighten up. A case helps me understand why your parents fight like this. I want to help them to stop fighting. I always, also want to help you to be less scared. I am like a walking stick. I try to help people to walk happily. Tumelu feels as if a bag full of rocks is rolling off his back. He tells Auntie Miriam how scared he was when he hid under his bed. Granny Melanie starts singing softly. She wipes the tears from his cheeks. Auntie Miriam gives him two sugar sticks. He puts them in Granny's handbag. They go home by taxi. Smoke from the houses hangs low in the air. Tumelu's muscles feel stiff. Granny Melanie shuffles painfully and tiredly with her walking stick. At home, she, take, she takes the sugar sticks from her handbag and gives them to Tumelu. He falls asleep with one in each hand. It's nearly evening when Tumelu wakes up he hears voices speaking softly. Granny Melanie is preparing food on a little gas stove. In the dim light, he sees Mama and Papa. He crawls deeper under the blanket and shuts his eyes tightly. What if they argue and fight again? Tumelu, Tumelu, we are back. Auntie Miriam is helping us to stop fighting. Mama's voice is trembling. Auntie Miriam is teaching us to speak nicely to each other. Papa adds. Granny Melanie leans on her walking stick. Softly she sings. Tu la tu, tu la ba ba. out from underneath the blanket. He reaches out to them, a sugar stick in each hand. Here's one for Mama and one for Papa, a walking sugar stick. <laughs>